Hey guys, uh, welcome to another video. So today I wanted to talk about like why are uh, the benefits of being an SOS vegan and like why why do it? So the first off I just want to talk about like some of the benefits I've noticed from adopting like an SOS uh, vegan lifestyle. So I'm not thinking about food all the time. I'm not thinking about like the next meal, like how I can make it taste really good. Just feeling a lot healthier um, than what I was having like salt, adding salt to my food, like sauces when I was vegan before. So I'm just feeling a lot healthier. Uh, I have a lot more mental clarity. Uh, I find it easier to eat healthy because like these nat I eat quite simply. So these natural foods actually taste quite good to me, even though to a lot of other, a lot of other people, um, like some rice and beans and vegetables wouldn't taste that good. They would go, oh, this is, this tastes really bland. And I've noticed that when I was, it's just a lot easier to lose weight. It's not easy to lose weight, but it's a lot easier to lose weight. And also maintain your weight because you can still select those foods, those natural foods that are gonna keep you really slim and healthy and they still really taste good. They're still really palatable. So vegan, being a vegan, like I think a lot of people have heard that being vegan isn't necessarily healthy. You can still get heart attacks. You can still have be overweight because I was still overweight while I was vegan it wasn't until I adopted this whole food plant-based diet and SOS free that I started losing the weight and becoming more in tune with my natural hunger signals so salt oil and sugar these sub and becoming more in tune with my natural hunger signals so salt oil and sugar these substances are highly concentrated and they're processed They've been extracted from whole natural foods and they've been put into mostly majority of the time we find these substances in packaged foods, but we can also add them to the add them to our foods. So why is salt bad? So salt, salt is a mineral that is needed for the normal functioning of the body. So there's if you're eating an SOS diet though, there's no reason why you should be worried about being salt deficient because these whole natural foods, nature has provided us with enough salt in these foods. So if you're eating a variety of whole plant foods, you should be getting around 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams a day, which is what your body needs. And another reason, other reasons why salt is not good uh, is because it too much salt can cause high blood pressure which is quite common. Stroke, it increases your risk for heart disease, osteoporosis and stomach cancer. And that's quite a few things. And besides increasing your risk for high blood pressure, it also causes you to retain a lot of water weight, uh, causes swelling and increasing your risk for like congestive heart failure which is not good. So we don't want to be having a whole salt, high salt diet over time because it's just going to put a lot of stress under the body. Another reason salt, you shouldn't be including salt in your diet is because it's a powerful stimulant. It's found in a lot of sauces, uh, just table salt and packaged foods. So if we're eating these, high, if you're adding, for example, a bowl of rice and you have another bowl of rice with soy sauce in it, you're more likely to overconsume on the bowl of rice with soy sauce because it's very addictive, it tastes good. We're not going to really be able to sense as much when we're full. And this is going to inhibit your weight loss goals if you want to lose weight because you might not be able to tell when you're exactly satiated. So you should definitely not be including salt in your diet over the long run and especially in high amounts. So if you're having salt, even if you're just adding it, you don't need it unless uh, you have hypothyroidism, which I'm pretty sure if you have that, you're going to have extra salt in your diet. So if you don't have any that condition, you don't need extra salt in your diet if you're eating a whole variety of natural plant foods. So what's the problem with having oil? So oil is 100% fat. It has 4,000 calories per pound. 
It has no fiber, no water, and it's easy to overconsume, making it a lot harder to lose weight. So if you're adding that oil to your pasta, you're going to be adding a lot more calories to your food that you actually wouldn't naturally want to eat. And that's just going to make it a lot difficult for you to lose weight. And it's really, if you're overweight, it's really bad. It's not good for your body at all if you're holding excess weight. Because excess weight is shown to promote inflammation, inhibits your immune function, increases your risk of heart disease, cholesterol, um, diabetes, and cancer. So some people say olive oil is healthy. Olive oil is not a health food. It lacks so many of the nutrients that the natural olive would have. And that's where we should be having it from. Not We should be getting these uh, nutrients from whole natural foods. Oil, yeah, get off the oil. It's found in so many packaged foods, such as vitamins, some foods you don't even realize. And it's over the long run, if you're having oil, it's going to clog up your arteries and increase your risks for heart attack so oil is a really weight gaining food and if you're having it uh, cut it out immediately uh, sugar so sugar is probably it's not as bad as oil in that it may not cause as many health problems over the long run but refined sugar is highly addictive if you're adding it to your smoothies your porridge is going to make you want more food and it's just empty calories so if you're trying to lose weight having sugar is going to make it having um adding processed sugar to food is just going to make it a lot harder to lose weight and also you might overeat on these foods because they're very stimulating so oil sugar and salt should not be included as part of your daily diet and i'm not saying i'm not telling anyone that you should be an SOS free vegan for life and you can't have salt or sugar ever again. I'm just saying if you're if you're finding you're relying on these things on a daily basis, really consider do you want to be out of this pleasure trap? Do you want to be out of this dietary pleasure trap? And it's going to take you around six to ten weeks to if you complete an SOS diet to get out of this SOS free diet to get out of this pleasure trap. And after that, you could probably do it 95% of the time. 100% would be fantastic, but 95% of the time is probably more realistic for most people. Thank you for watching video, this video, and I hope this inspires you to try out an SOS-free whole foods diet because it's going to be the best for your health in the long run. And you want to be doing this 95% of the time to decrease your risk of all these diseases I've kind of mentioned, especially for oil and salt so really get onto it guys and thanks for watching